Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, this uh, tutorial, I mean, we're going to be making a bike sharing prediction app based on this data set, real data set that takes place in Seoul with bike sharing. It's going to look just like this. By the way, there's one more feature of Streamlit. Your app that you deploy can also say what it's doing along with these slider bars. See some of my other videos where I've done uh, plenty of other AI and ML web apps with Streamlit from regression, classification, image classification, content-based recommendation systems. You name it, I got it on there. Check it out. Now, uh, for this, you guys can use uh, Google Colab or you guys can use Jupyter Notebook for the first part. We're going to be using GitHub to deploy, and I'll also be showing you guys how to deploy later. And we're going to be using this data set right here. Now, guys, if you guys are new to my channel, um, I've also got MLOps pipelines. I've got all kinds of other videos. You name it, I got it with SageMaker, Google Cloud deployments, reinforcement learning, IBM Watson deployment. You guys name it, I got it on my channel. Check all my videos out. There's something you're here for. There's something you else you also need. I got it. I've even got basic data science also and clustering ancestor DNA results. You name it, I got it on my channel. Anyways, guys, we're going to be using this data set right here, the bike sharing prediction. You guys see? And uh, on the notebook, before we get started, we're going to drop dates. And then this is the target right here. And then as you guys can see, it's got a lot of columns. And uh, by the way, guys, um, feel free to share some of my other videos also. Now let's get to the notebook. One of the benefits you guys can do is you guys can use, uh, if you guys use Google Colop or some of my convolutional neural networks is, you can change the runtime to TPU and GPU instance. But for things like this, Jupyter Notebook is finer this on a CPU instance. You guys can also upgrade your plans because image classification can get pretty, um, needy of hardware accelerators with a uh, big data sets and conv complicated convolutional neural networks see some of my other videos i've even got this uh, deploying one on streamlit and i've got individual SageMaker deployment videos anyways guys import these libraries unzip it read it with pandas df head And just like we were checking it all out, we're going to do a little feature engineering also in this video. Okay, uh, basically DF, like, well, like I was talking about for Kaggle, was drop date, right? And then we're going to fill in A, end place equals true. We're going to do the label encoder. And then X equals drop the target, bike count on an axis of one. Okay, and then y equals the target, bike count. Now, as you guys see, this is a pretty varied count, and everything else is pretty varied. However, we're not going to be getting into too much data science and see if it's a linear relationship and change the polynomial degree. No, if you guys want to do that, see some of my other videos for improving a Linear regression model with polynomial features. See my other video for that. Now, right here, we're going to do the test train split because we need to cross validate it with an R2 score. We're going to be using the random forest regressor. Fit X train, fix Y train. Predict X test so we can cross validate. There's the predicted line with matplotlib. And there's the R2 score, 84%. That's pretty good. And then, guys, uh, just so you know, this was too big to upload to GitHub. 
Therefore, if you guys have another place where you guys can deploy Streamlit, and you uh, and it allows uploads of uh, more than 25 megabytes, do this right here, just so you know. And then, guys, save that new data frame that was cleaned and everything. The new data CSV. Why? Because it's too big to upload to GitHub. Therefore, we're going to be using the algorithm itself. See some of my other Streamlit videos for doing both. Like my language detection web app. Okay. And my content-based recommendation systems. Okay. Now, guys, one more thing I need to cover is deployment. I'm going to skip ahead for a second. But when you guys get to the, after you guys get to the GitHub part, after you guys have done this part, I'm about to skip over. I guess we'll go to the GitHub. Okay, remember, you need a requirements text. Why? Because it has to know what to, re, what to install. And you have to name it just like this. Okay, you guys see? So, um, do this right here. This is your requirements text file. And then your data frame, upload it. Well, uh, eventually I, I did another model, but the problem was the model was, um, I did it, but the problem was uh, the other model, it was a different model. And it wasn't as accurate. So I wanted to use the most accurate model because remember it has to be under 25 megabytes. I've got other videos for model, loading the model as a pickle as well. So this isn't the random forest regressor, this is the naive base. And it was like 24% R2 score. Okay. So you guys are going to copy this right here. Okay, just like we did on the notebook, we're going to read it with pandas. X equals Y equals the target. X equals everything but the target. Random forest regressor, test train split, X train, Y train, fit it. And then this right here, remember? Actually, guys, um, let me go to it. Okay, that's the one already up there. This is what you do, guys. You put in your repository, right? Whatever it is. And then right here, you do the uh, name of the app file. Okay? And then click deploy when it's all good to go. That simple. Okay. Now let's get back to it. Okay, so uh, the header and the text, what would they be talking about? This and this. You guys see? And then uh, that at the very top with the 84% or two score. Okay, guys, do uh, inputs equals one for that first column, you know, uh, just avoid it. Because uh, the problem is uh, for this algorithm, it says it's expecting 13 features, but there's only really 12. So therefore, well, let's just put a neutral number for what was supposed to be in the first one. Okay, hour equals this range. Temperature equals in Celsius this range. Where did I get this information? Well, let me go back to it.
Because remember, guys, that's the slider bar. Okay, guys, I got the range from uh, over here. You see, like 0 to 8.8, .8, you guys see? And then when we label encode it, we can see, you know, what it used to be yes before 1, you know, 0 for uh, no, and then 1 for yes. Example, you guys see these ranges? That's how we know where to put it. You guys see? So copy this right here, all these ranges. Rainfall, one, two for spring. Remember guys, this is how we put the text to tell the user what to say. This is the range as well, remember? Comma, snowfall, and then all these uh, inputs, we're gonna put them right here. You guys see? There we go. Put all these ranges. And then uh, for the predict button, regger predict result flatten as type of float, because it's a float, remember? Write the updated resolution. You guys see that right there? Just like this, at 84% accuracy. And then you guys see? You see, guys, see the slider bar, how it works? It's going to look just like this after you're done. You guys see? Just like this. And uh, one more feature on uh, Streamlit you guys can do. You guys can also rerun it like this. To start over. And a couple more features since I got it up in the air. You can check analytics right here. That's me who viewed it. You can delete it, you can reboot it, add it with code spaces, you guys see? Let's see more options and settings. You guys can change this right here if you guys want. This app is searchable. See? There we go. And guys, just so you know, data, you guys can find any kind of data you guys want on Kaggle. Just so you guys know. Anyways, guys, um... I'm going to be doing uh, these videos off and on. I really appreciate your support. Those that are watching, feel free to share, guys. Also, guys, uh, stay tuned. I will get back on the cloud in a little while. This just Streamlit Cloud is free and your notebook is free. Trying to grow more support, therefore I can get back on SageMaker. I've got uh, nearly so many videos you guys can see. So many different types of models and pipelines. Check them out. Getting them approved for production. I've got it all. Anyways, guys, stay tuned. And then until next time, thank you. Bye.